Thanksgiving dinner, and Christmas is right around the corner. What am I gonna do? Huh, I've gotta hurry to get ready. Yes, it's that time of year again. I hear sleigh bells in the air again. Kids, Christmas list without an end. I wish this feeling would never end. Santa's coming, Santa Claus is coming to town. Can't wait for Christmas Eve. He better bring this for me. Oh, how I can't wait to see What's under the Christmas tree Let's have hot cocoa in the morning It's cold outside but I'm feeling warm There's just a little bit of gifts inside But we still got one more night Santa Claus is coming Yeah, he's coming to town What am I seeing up there? Look, kids. Look up there. I think I see Santa Claus. Look. Wow. Right there. Wow. Don't you see him? No. Uh, let's, uh, look, let me lift you up. Look. look. No. Come on, kids. Climb on me. Look. And there's Rudolph with his reindeer friends. And they're playing saxophones. Oh, my goodness. They're coming this way. prompted me to do this whole project, uh, I love Christmas music. I mean, I adore it. However, I have become a little tired of hearing the classics over and over and over and over again. And I felt like there needed to be some fresh material uh, in the pool of Christmas songs. So talking about what it really means and what it represents. And I, um, I wrote this song and I, I, I just, called Professor James Hall and Dr. Kevin Bond because there is no album complete without Dr. Kevin Bond. And he just gave me this like energetic sermonette right in the middle. And uh, it really anchored scripturally what Christmas is about. And James Hall is, you know, the professor, he just is what it is. And in a time where things are quite different and middle of the pandemic, things a little bit harder to experience. I feel like that song brings all the energy of Broadway right to your ears and right to your screen.
It's the best time of the year Filled with love, laughter and cheer Hear the carolers sing It's the joy Christmas brings But don't forget about What matters most It's not Christmas gifts And mistletoes Many gifts sit under the tree Kids behaving as good as can be As we share pumpkin pie with a hot cup of chai Let's not forget For we must tell The story of Emmanuel For we all love that feeling Feels like we are dreaming But what's the true meaning of Christmas to you? We're that familiar feeling Fill our hearts with cheer Let's not forget The reason why We celebrate A holy night For we all love that feeling Feels like we are dreaming But what's the true meaning of Christmas to you? Please don't get caught up in The commercialization of Christmas And forget the fundamental truth The real reason for the season That our Lord and Savior Traveled 42 generations He was born of a virgin In the city of Bethlehem There wasn't any room in the inn He had to sleep in a manger The wise men traveled from afar They were witnesses And suddenly There was with the angel A multitude of the heavenly host Praising God and saying Glory to God in the highest And on earth peace Goodwill toward men Now that's the true meaning of Christmas I'm dreaming of a Christmas evening Where that familiar feeling Fill our hearts with cheer Let's not forget The three wise men Went to the east To worship him We all love that feeling Feels like we are dreaming But what's the true meaning of Christmas to you? Noel is the Christmas hymn that I love the most. I feel that it tells the story of the birth of Jesus Christ like no other song. Ani finds a way to keep the melody intact while adding this contemporary classical vibe that takes the song to a whole nother level. This made me very excited to reharmonize a traditional song in a new way. This was the perfect opportunity to do that. Uh. When you hear my arrangement of Noel, you're hearing the melody kept intact with illustrious reharmonization supporting it in a way that you've never heard before. And then there's Cornell's piano solo, the perfect balance of classical and jazz. Please enjoy this arrangement of the first Noel. <laughs>
bum, boom, bum, Misty Christmas. That song was written many moons ago. Um, it's really written at least 20 years ago, I wrote that song. Uh, but it wasn't developed the way it is now. I actually felt comfortable enough to sit down and compose this arrangement of Misty Christmas. It was a long time coming. Uh, some of my friends recorded versions of it, and it was really good, but I never felt like it was realized the way it needed to be. And finally, uh, with orchestra, it just sings in a whole nother way. So I am so glad to finally present to the world a song that I've cherished for more than 20 years, Misty Christmas.
There's no Christmas without you. This song really speaks to two worlds. I wrote a song about Santa Claus. I wrote a song about the true meaning. I figured it'd be cool to write a song right down the middle that a person can sing and it could mean no Christmas without the loved ones they've lost. No Christmas without the girlfriend or boyfriend they just broke up with. And also no Christmas without God in their life, right? So when you listen to this song, it can mean so many different things to so many different people, depending on where they're at at that point in their life. So I hope you enjoy it, and I'm interested in seeing what it means to you. yourself a merry little Christmas. Some people ask me, well, Mike, why did you do that song if you did a lot of original material? That song, 
is very special to me uh, for two reasons. One, the saxophone that I played on that tune came from a very special friend, David Sanborn. And I remember his album and his Christmas project that he did, and that song was recorded. Not only did he record that song, he also recorded with that saxophone. So I received that instrument as a gift, basically, uh, on February 14th, 2016. Can't forget it. It's Valentine's Day. Um, so he invites my wife and myself over to his house, gives me the horn to check out, and of course I loved it. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of David Sanborn, so it was a win-win for me. And he said to me that he did not want that instrument to become a trophy and just sit on the wall. It needed to be played. And there was a responsibility attached to that gift, right? So oftentimes we look at things we want as we're collecting things and we don't really understand the gravity or the responsibility attached to it. So um, when you have a gift, whether it's playing an instrument or dancing or drawing, any kind of art or anything, there's a responsibility that goes with it. So I felt obligated to play my saxophone that used to belong to David Sanborn and to play Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas.
Navidad Latino. Oh, that used to be called uh, Christmas in Cuba. I couldn't make up my mind. But I had this vibe and this feeling of a song that would represent part of my heritage. My mom is Panamanian, my dad is Jamaican. I have Cuban uh, great-grandparents. So there's a lot of the Latin culture infused into everything that I do. So how could I do a Christmas project and not include something from that? You get to feel the vibe of what Christmas would be like elsewhere, right? I think a lot of times we think of Christmas and we think New York City and shopping and things like that. But you know, growing up in a Caribbean household, it's a different vibe and we didn't really have all the luxuries uh, and, and tons of Christmas gifts under trees. However, we could dance, we could sing. Uh, my mom would make an amazing breakfast on Christmas morning and we stayed in our pajamas the whole day. So this song represents the joy of Christmas in other places.
That's it. Working backwards, I listen to a lot of Monty Alexander. He's still alive, an amazing piano player, lives in New York. Um, and then you listen to the trio. So you have like Herb Ellis, Monte, and Ray Brown, which is amazing. But then you pull Monte out and you put in uh, Oscar Peterson. Oscar Peterson. And it's like, ah, oh, that's yeah. another amazing, yeah. another amazing trio. So I've, I've, I've been listening to more of the trio stuff lately and lately meaning the last four or five years but um, as a saxophonist which speaks to the melodic side of me but I'm from that school of that uh, the Sanborn school of tone okay right so tone and melody really mean a lot and and then you can't talk about David Sanborn and not mention Marcus Miller so these guys have all played whether they know it or not They've all played uh, a huge part in how I go about creating and envisioning a final product. That's just saxophones, that's just melody. When you're talking harmonically, doesn't matter what the season is. Stevie Wonder is like, you know, that's SWU, SWU, Stevie Wonder University. If you didn't go to that university, you're in trouble. You gotta go back. Go back to school. I don't care what other degrees you got. SWU. So Stevie has helped me just uh, figure out progressions and leading tones and um, does it in a, in a very unique way. And I learned 20 years ago um, a bunch of his tunes, literally like maybe like 98 tunes, uh, sequentially from the Motown years all the way up to like Babyface and stuff like that. You know. Um, Stevie's huge, it's not jazz per se, but a huge influence in my musicality. Yeah. And the last thing I will say, 
um, can't leave out church because I mean, geez, gospel music is really the the, the foundation of rhythm and blues and and jazz too. If you like Ray Charles, then you like gospel because you know a lot of it was the same in one. I got some of that stuff here. Uh, no Christmas without you. Uh, you know, it's that. It's that era. Whatever, I, whatever's on this record, I try to be um, very authentic to the era and the time period. We're we're doing an old flavor, per se, with better technology, standing on the shoulders of the greats, and um, trying to just bring back that level of musicianship and community to the industry. It's not a solo thing, it's a community thing. See, in New York, when I record, I don't go anywhere. I just I just do everything in my crib. Um, but you can't do this there. You just can't. It's just the infrastructure is just, you know, in New York is different, and everybody's used to doing what they got to do from the crib or, or network and just email stuff, you know, and overdub. But, um, you know, sometimes you got to take it back to the old school. And, uh, like, what would, they say, what would Jesus do? What would Quincy do? You know, this is, this is, this is how Quincy did what he did, with, you know, in the day. So this is the vibe. If you want that, that synergy, cats got to be in the same room, you know? And when you talk about Nashville, when I say cats got to be in the same room, it's not just being together. The room is another player. So if you, if you don't have a, a, a nice room to play in, that's a very important player missing from your record. So all the cats gotta be in the right room to get the right sound. And that's what you hear, you know. Um, you do a record in Nashville, it's gonna sound like it was done in Nashville. Misty Christmas is that magical song that, you know, makes you feel like a kid in a great way because everybody didn't have a great childhood, right? <laughs> yeah. But on Christmas, you know, even if you was poor, you still felt great on Christmas. Or my mom and made sure we felt great if she had to wrap a Bible. <laughs> we felt good when we opened that Bible, like, whoo, Christmas Bible, you know. But um, so that that Misty Christmas makes me feel like a child and, and I love that feeling. Um, so it's good when you want to have that feeling and each song uh, was put into this record because they each invoke a different side a different shade of Christmas but then there's um, Santa Claus coming to town it's like me as an adult feeling great about Christmas and having kids you know it's from the other side because you know we know Santa's not real yeah but it just feels good to just sing that with your kids yeah. and and I wrote it and sang it to my kids and they started singing it I said yeah this if your kids like it you, you, you're in the right direction yeah. <laughs> don't turn around yeah, I so I wrote that song in like one day and um, you know it's just a kid friendly song yeah it's a kid friendly song and we've heard so many versions of this I decided to really deviate from the melody just keep the tag of Santa Claus coming to town uh, it's that it's that Count Basie feel definitely you got the all the elms of the sax soli all these other things happening um, and it, it feels good and it sounds amazing the, like, I can't stress you know the importance of having the right people playing music and the right engineer yeah. and the right console <laughs>